Hi, I'm Adam, and this video will be a brief overview of the Construct 2 release, R110.2. In this release, there are two major new features, the containers um, found in Vanilla Construct, and also the experimental support for importing sprite animations in the file format .scml. Spriter is something created by BrashMonkey, and you can find that at brashmonkey.com, and it allows for intuitive development of 2D animations. Um, there is an example that they provide here, and at the moment you can download a free version of it while it's still in pre-order stage. Um, I'm not sure if the paid-for version and the free version are slightly different or you have um, more options but yeah if you go to brashmonkey.com you can find it it's developed by lucid so you may have seen lucid from the construct um, to all the skira.com forums um, it's well worth checking out anyway going back to the updates uh, as mentioned those two features containers and the support for sprite are included as well as a few other changes to the construct 2 program and you can find these at skira.com forward slash construct2 forward slash releases forward slash r110.2 um, there, there's one more thing to note as well that with the introduction of containers there is a breaking change so some of your original save files may not work as originally intended to because of this so it's worth checking that out so what are containers? Containers are a feature found previously in Construct Classic, but now included it into Construct 2. They enable you to group a series of objects, usually sprites, together in their namesake, a container. Any event affecting a sprite in a container automatically picks and references the other sprites from that container by their association. The classic example is within an RTS style game. You have a sprite representing a tank body and another sprite representing the turret. If you were to create a series of these and have an event such as a collision which triggers a further series of events such as destroying the tank that was hit by a bullet, you would need to somehow identify that tank's associated sprites to destroy them as well. Containers provide a way to more easily associate and reference these appropriate sprites. Okay, to give you an example from Construct 2, um, I'll create a series of sprites, um, copying one, duplicating another, and having another in a container. So if I just create um, some tank bodies quickly. Okay, so I've created, I've also created turrets for each of these tanks. Um, I'll just show you how to add a container quite quickly with the red tank, and this will be the container tank. So quickly, so first you want to know the parent is, and for this I'm going to have the parent as the base of the tank. I then come over here to the left where it says container, and it currently says no container. I simply click on create. And then I choose another sprite in which to add to this container. I'm going to choose turret 3. Okay. I just move that closer. Um, actually, I'll put, I'll put the things on top, the turrets above them. I'm then going to simply just copy and paste this green tank. And then I'm going to duplicate or clone the blue tank. And I'm doing this just to give you an idea. I clone it? Yeah, just to give you an idea um, of the realistic ramifications of containers. Um, if you had a game, you'd normally create the different objects, and in a way, you're copying the different objects, and they all have the same name. Whereas if you create different objects which look the same, you're in, you're in effect duplicating them. If you notice that the names are different for each of these sprites. 
and this container is just going to stay the same because when I create this con um, this tank, I'm going to do it via the events editor. Um, so I'm also going to copy and paste this tank turret for each of these turrets and I'm also going to duplicate or clone this turret for each of these turrets. So taking into consideration first the green tanks, if I were to write something to the effect, one second I'll just add the mouse, if I were to write something to the effect that on object clicked, let's use the object the tank body, then destroy the tank body and also destroy its associated turret. Um, this is to replicate that in game if your tank were to sustain damage um, and be destroyed that both it and the turret would be destroyed and if I were to play this for you you'll notice that if I were to click on the tank body to destroy it the turrets are destroyed as well. Notice however that while one of the tank bodies had been clicked on and so ahead the programming had identified that. It didn't identify the other tank bodies, but it did identify all the other turrets. Um, so just to show you again, if I click on one tank body, all the turrets are destroyed. So it doesn't have a way of referencing which particular turret if you were to program like this. Um, if I were to program individually, for duplicated objects, so for example, if I were to click the tank body, um, if I were to click the tank body, I'll destroy that tank body and destroy its associated turret. Oh, what am I doing? Sorry, and destroy its associated turret. Um, and play this and click the tank body. Only one turret is destroyed, unlike the greens where all the turrets are destroyed. However, I have to program individually per each tank, and so in a um, RTS style game, it's going to create a lot of work for you to have to program individually per tank. This is where containers come in, um, and they help quite a lot. So th this is a container, it's containing the tank body and the turret, if you look down here on the left. Um, and let's say, for example, that if I on object click, I'll choose the tank body and destroy the tank body. First, I should point out that with containers, um, if one object is destroyed within the container, then all the objects are destroyed within the container. The whole container is destroyed. So firstly, I need to program the turret be destroyed because it will automatically. If you wanted a game whereby if the that, um, the tank took damage and you wanted the turret to be destroyed um, but for the tank to remain you can get away with this by making the turret invisible or including another sprite or animation to make it look as if the turret had been destroyed but the actual sprite remains there and it can be invisible but gives the effect of being destroyed. Um, I'm also going to add um, an event that on start of layout um, where is it? On start of layout that I'm going to create the object um, at about 300, 200 just to show you that one, if you create one of the objects from the container it automatically creates the other objects so if I were to play this now first you notice that these other objects, these red tanks here I didn't put them over enough, these red tanks here are created and you also notice that if I click on just one of the bases, only one of the base, tank bases and one of the turrets is destroyed at the time. Um, like that. Unfortunately I clicked on the top blue one so it was destroyed at the same time. Um, so this, this kind of gives you an idea of how um, containers can be used to your advantage um, and how they're, they're very good. So I'll try this again. Bang, 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 individually destroyed, whereas the blue one, you have to program them individually, so you require a lot more events to destroy the different tanks. And the green ones, if I destroy one base, all the other turrets are destroyed. I could spend time and program it so that if I were to destroy the tank base, 
then the turret in contact with that tank base is picked out, identified and destroyed. But it's so much easier to use containers which already reference the other sprites relevant to that tank. So I hope this example gives you an idea of what containers can do. There are recording. Okay, what is Spriter? Uh, this is just a brief overview. Spriter is an intuitive 2D animation tool for video game makers. I think it was originally created with Construct Classic, but I may be incorrect there. It's developed primarily primarily by Lucid and you can find him on the scary.com forum or you can come to brashmonkey.com and go to the forum there or contact him. Um, it's a program which enables you to draw together a series of images and animate them to create a character or an object or item for your computer game, your 2D computer game. Because of its association with the creator and his use of Construct, he has enabled a plugin for this to be used with Construct 2. If you go to skira.com forward slash forum forward slash topic 59694.html and if you can't remember that, if you simply come to the original release webpage which I mentioned before and scroll down to the link where it says this form thread is up, uh, this form thread up to date, it should take you through and you to this form thread whereby you are able to download the plugin. Once you've installed the plugin to Construct, the Construct 2 folder, you can then start using Spriter to help you with your game. Um, at the moment, because of both Construct 2 have experimentally included it with the release, it's not working 100%, so you may get a few errors. Um, however, if you download Spriter, there is a free version, which I managed to get hold of, um, as well as a pre-order version. I'm not sure whether the pre-order version has more functionality than the free version, um, but I'll find out how later. Um, you can download an example called Monster, which this is, and it gives you an idea of what Spriter can do. So for example, if I play this animation called Posture, it shows you a series of different images grouped together to form a monster. There's also another animation idle, which shows you. Uh, you basically use, similar to Flash, different um, keyframes to animate your sprite. When, once you're happy, you simply save the project as whatever, it saves it into a .scml file format and then you just simply drag it into your Construct 2 game. So that's basic Spriter. I may produce a video later on um, looking, in, looking at it in more detail to help you. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. More information can be found at my website englishacorn.com or for more Construct 2 specific information please visit my site c2ezine.com, a Construct 2 related online magazine. Thank you again for watching, please subscribe.